Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Here on the table, I have two of Dr. Prepare's 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now this one right here is the older version that I reviewed a little over six months ago. This was an excellent performing battery, came in at a decent price, but it was missing two key features that you'd want on a battery. For example, this one did not support low temperature charging protection. So if you use this battery below 32 degrees, there was a chance that you could actually charge this up and damage the internal batteries. The other thing that this did not support was series connections. For example, you could not connect this up to two batteries or four batteries in series to give you a 24 volt or 48 volt battery. Well, Dr. Prepare has come out with an updated version of this battery, and that's this one here. This one does have low temperature charging protection, and it does support series connections. So you can create a 24 volt or a 48 volt battery using multiple of these batteries put together in series, so you can support a large inverter with a lot of wattage. Now, what's really cool about this battery is it comes in at an excellent price. Right now, they have a sale going on, and I have a 5% off discount code on top of that, to bring the price down to $360. Now it's gonna be really hard to find another battery out there that actually has low temperature charging protection for $360. So if you want that feature, you may wanna stick around and watch this video. Now I've already done all the testing on this battery, so I'm just gonna show you guys the results for that. I've done a full capacity test to see if we can pull advertised capacity. I've actually put this in the freezer for two days and then tried charging it to see if the low temperature charging protection worked. And I've also charged at the max rate of 50 amps and discharged it at 100 amps to see if there were any issues with this overheating. So let's go ahead and jump into those results. And at the end of the video, we'll talk a little bit about the specifications and maybe some of the other details about the battery and maybe some of the advantages that you have going with a lithium iron phosphate battery over another battery chemistry. So let's just jump right into it. Now, one of the first tests that I like do on a battery like this is a full capacity or discharge test meaning I take it from 100% full all the way down until it shuts off to see if we can get the advertised amount from the battery. Now this is advertised to have 1280 watt hours of capacity or right around 100 amp hours. So I was able to charge this up with my adjustable power supply up to 14.6 volts. And then once it was charged up, I connected up my pure sine wave inverter. And between the inverter and the battery, I had a shunt that tracked all the power going out of the battery. Now I discharged this battery at a 0.2C rate, which is right around 250 watts. And by the time the test was ended, it ran for five hours and 15 minutes. We were able to pull 101 amp hours from this battery or 1290 watt hours. So we did get full capacity from this battery. Now it was actually nice to get full capacity on this because sometimes the more affordable batteries, you don't get full power, but we did on this one. Now, once this battery is fully discharged, that means we needed to charge it back up, but I wanted to test out low temperature charging protection. So I actually threw this in my freezer for two days. When I took it out, it was right around five degrees Fahrenheit and it had frost over the entire thing. So I knew it was cold all the way to the core. Now I hooked up my adjustable power supply and tried charging it and it did not take a charge at all. So the low temperature charging protection was working just as it should. So instead of charging it up below freezing and damaging the internal cells, it was protecting it. And so really good here guys that this actually has low temperature charging protection. Now, once the battery had warmed up to room temperature, I thought it'd be good to test the max charge rate on this battery, which is advertised to be 50 amps. So they just advise you don't go over 50 amps when you're trying to charge it up. Now I have a large adjustable power supply that can charge at 60 amps. So I connected that up to the battery here and I charged it for about 25 minutes and the battery was still room temperature. I didn't notice any issues with it heating up. Now, I also thought it'd be good to show you guys how simple it is to charge one of these batteries using a solar charge controller and solar panels. So I filmed myself doing some testing outdoors. Let me go ahead and show you what that looked like in my solar charging demo. I wanted to take a second in the video to demonstrate that you can easily charge up these batteries using solar panels and a solar charge controller. So I'm using two of my SP350s. These are from Blue Eddy. They're just ginormous solar panels. And I have them wired together in parallel into my Kisei solar charge controller and that is hooked up directly to the battery. Now taking a closer look at the solar charge controller you can see I have my solar panels coming in right here to the solar input and then this is the output towards the battery which goes to these alligator clamps. Now we are charging at 24.4 amps the battery is sitting at 14.6 volts so it can't put any more power into um, the battery because it's sitting at its full state. And that's just because you have such high amperage going into the battery, it kind of raises up the voltage. Now this will top out at 30 amps, 
But you see we're getting close to that. We're getting 24.3 amps. Now these solar panels here have the potential to put out around 700 watts. And we're only seeing around 350 watts into the system right now because our charge controller here is the bottleneck. Uh, it's not the battery's fault. It's not the solar panel's fault. I just need a bigger charge controller. Okay guys, now I'm just curious to see how many watts we're actually getting. So I've actually wired both of these together in series and I plugged them into a larger power station with a bigger charge controller. This is the Energizer PPS 2000. Let's go ahead and see how many watts we're getting from both these panels. Okay, so we're getting around 505 watts, sitting right around 65, 66 volts. And you see the battery is sitting around 42% state of charge. So as for the solar conditions today, it's around 90 degrees and we do have these really high clouds. So I don't expect to get, uh, you know, amazing numbers. And these panels are also laying flat. So 500 watts out of a total of 700 possible, not too bad. So I have everything hooked back up to the Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour battery. I'm just going to let it sit the rest of the afternoon charging with these solar panels. Now remember this can charge up to 50 amps or right around 650 watts or so. It's just my charge controller can't charge that fast. So if you wanted to get maximum power, you'd have to go with a 50 amp solar charge controller. So coming back inside, you can see that it's fairly easy to charge up one of these batteries using a solar charge controller and your solar panels. Now they come in all different shapes and sizes. I have videos on solar panels and I have videos on charge controllers. I'll include some of my favorites down in the video description if you want to learn more about charging up one of these batteries using solar panels and charge controllers. Now the last test that I wanted to do on this battery was to see if we could pull the maximum 100 amps for about 10 minutes without any issues. Now 100 amps comes out to be right around 1280 watts, which means this will support a 1000 watt inverter just fine. Now you'll have a little bit of issues trying to run a 2000 watt inverter, so you're going to be limited right around 1280 watts like I said before. So I hooked up my inverter and I actually plugged my EcoFlow Delta Max into the inverter because it has an adjustable charging amount. So I set that to charge at 1100 watts and with efficiency losses and things, we are pulling around 1250 watts from this battery. So I let that run for 10 minutes. And during that test, it was pulling around 105 to 103 amps continuously. And it only got a little bit warm on the back of the battery here. It was never hot to the touch. So we were able to pull the maximum 100 amps from this battery for over 10 minutes. So great results on that testing. Well, now that we've finished the testing on this battery and confirmed it has low temperature charging protection, you can pull 100 amp hours from it. You can discharge it at 100 amps and charge it at 50 amps. Um, you know, this is a great battery for the price. I was very impressed with our test results. Now, I'm going to just take a second to talk about the actual size, weight, and dimensions of this battery. Now, because this is lithium iron phosphate, it comes in really lightweight compared to a lead acid battery. This is only 25 pounds. It's about 13 inches wide by 9 inches tall by 7 inches deep. So it's, com it's very compact, and it's about the same size as a Group 31 lead acid battery. Now on the top of the battery, you have these eight millimeter bolts where you connect up your ring terminals, and these are compatible with a 5 16 style uh, ring terminal. So even though it's eight millimeter, 5 16 will fit under this, and you get a really good connection. Now, if you want, you can remove this handle here, but I like to leave it there because it's really easy to carry around the battery with that installed. Now, Dr. Prepare does offer a five-year limited warranty on this battery, and you can reach their support group at support at drprepare.com. Now, the deal for this battery being available around $360 is available on their website. I'll include the discount code and um, a link to the product in the video description. So if you wanna learn more about it or if you wanna purchase it, um, you can find that inf information down in the video description or on my pinned comment. Now, there are some other benefits to this being lithium iron phosphate. Not only is it lightweight, but you get a ton of life cycles. You can actually use this once daily for 10 years and you'll still have 80% capacity, meaning you can get 3,000 life cycles to 80%. Um, you know, you don't get that with lead acid batteries. Um, I plan to use this in a future build where I want to build just a super cheap 1000 watt backup system that all you guys can build. It's basically can consist of a battery, an inverter, and a charge controller. So um, if you guys are interested in a video like that, 
please comment down below. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Also, if you've liked the uh, testing and information about this battery, please give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate Dr. Prepare sending out this battery for a review and it's actually performed very well. If you are looking for a battery that has low temperature charging protection, this would be a great option. And you know, it comes in at a great price too. So the pricing should be around for about a month to give you guys a chance to think about the, the decision if you wanna buy this or not. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.